Hello there! When we play VRChat with any headset, we might feel that we need something more after a while. Seeing all these people dancing, moving their bodies, we want the same. We want to complete our VR experience and after using the headset, the next step is obviously a full body tracking. And this is the main topic of this video. There are many full body tracking solutions on the market right now, but I will try to focus on the ones that you can buy right away and that provide high tracking accuracy. Before I start talking about specific models, I know that there is one very important thing that you might be curious about. Can you use all these full body tracking solutions with a headset like an Oculus slash MetaQuest 2? The answer is yes, but only if you connect your headset to your computer using a link cable or wireless with Airlink. Of course, full body tracking will also work with Rift S, First Quest, Windows Mixed Reality headsets like HP Reverb G2 and all Lighthouse headsets like Pimax, Valve Index or HTC Vive. HTC Vive trackers are trackers that use lighthouse laser tracking with base stations. We have three versions. First is just called HTC Vive Tracker, which looks like this. Second version called HTC Vive Tracker 2.0 or HTC Vive Tracker 2080, which looks almost the same like the previous one, but with a different button color. As you can see, they look almost the same, have the same battery life of about three hours, their size and weight are the same. The really significant difference is that the first version of a Vive Tracker is incompatible with a base station 2.0 and works only with 1.0. Vive Tracker 2.0 or 2080 and Vive Tracker 3.0 works with both base stations 1.0 and 2.0. Exactly, Vive Tracker 3.0, the latest version of Vive Tracker. It's smaller, lighter, and has a longer battery life of around seven and a half hours. First version is no longer available in stores. You can probably buy it secondhand, but let's ignore it for now. You can still buy brand new Vive Trackers 2.0 slash 2080 for almost 100 US dollars. Vive Trackers 3.0 are the easiest to buy right now and they cost around 120 US dollars. So which one to choose? For 20 dollars more, we can get longer battery life, smaller size and weight. Also, Vive Trackers 3.0 has less tracking issues on average than 2080 version. In my opinion, the choice is simple. It's best to buy Vive Trackers 3.0. There is also Tundra Trackers. They are very similar to Vive Trackers 3.0, both have the same battery life, support base stations 1.0 and 2.0, but the Tundra Trackers are slightly smaller and lighter and have a better mounting system, especially for people who want to attach them to their shoes. Tundra Trackers cost almost the same or just a few dollars more than Vive Trackers 3.0, but they are harder to buy due to their availability. It is really hard to say which one is better, Tundra or Vive Trackers. Even if Tundra is 25 grams lighter, it doesn't really matter if you wear 50 or 70 grams on you. You can imagine, it weighs same as one little Snickers bar, you can barely feel it in your hand. There is another advantage of using Tundra Trackers, as it only takes one USB port for all trackers, while Vive Trackers takes one USB port for each tracker. Therefore, I would say buy the one that is cheaper or available right now. The minimum number of trackers is free. For your feet and hips, you can buy an additional one for the chest or two extra for your knees or elbows. Of course, for Vive trackers and Tundra trackers, you must have lighthouse tracking system, so you will need to buy base stations. There are two versions, 1.0 and 2.0. Base station 1.0 is no longer available in stores, so you can buy a new one and have to look for used one. It shouldn't cost more than 70 US dollars for one. Base Station 2.0 costs 150 US dollars at the Steam store, but very often they are out of stock, so you will have to wait or look for a second hand, which will cost the same or even more sometimes. Base Station 2.0 is obviously better, but to be honest, it's not a big difference when it comes to basic usage. Because of higher VOV, 2.0 are easier to mount and we are not limited to specific placing for a good tracking. 1.0 must be mounted in opposite corners and 2.0 you can mount however you want. 2.0 also have a higher tracking range of 7 meters, while in the version 1.0 it was only 4 meters. Base station 1.0 is limited to two devices in one configuration, so you can't use more than two base stations 1.0, but with a base station 2.0 you can have more, three or even four base stations in one configuration, if you want to increase your tracking accuracy and remove blind spots. 
Of course, you can also try to play with one base station, 1.0 or 2.0. They both work as a single device, but you will have to face it all the time as the base station needs to see the trackers on your body, so it will be only 180 degrees tracking, but it is better than nothing. What about the price? Free trackers are enough for most people. They provide good legs and hips tracking, so there is no need to buy more. The price for such a setup should be around 360 US dollars for Vive Trackers 3.0, or a bit more if you choose to buy Tundra Trackers, and between 140 and 300 for base stations, depending on which one you choose. I have a little tip for you here. If you want to buy base station 1.0, don't look just for the base station, as you can buy old HTC Vive headset with controllers and two base stations 1.0 for $150 or even less, especially if you don't care about the headset condition. Unfortunately, there is one more limitation. Your configuration can contain only one version of the base station, so you can't mix them. You can't use 1.0 and 2.0 at the same time. Again, it is really hard to say which base station is best for you. Let's say, if your VR play space is less than 4 per 4 meters, there are no objects between the corners of the room and nothing that can reflect the light emitted by the base station, you can just choose a setup of two base stations 1.0. But if the room has a weird shape, there are many objects that can reflect the light from your base station, or your play space is just larger than 4 per 4 meters, two base stations 2.0 configuration would be a better choice. Because if you ever have a problem with the tracking, you can just buy a next base station to increase the coverage, and you can do that with base station 1.0. Of course, there is also a way to use full body tracking without base stations, so if you can't or you don't want to buy base stations, you can just use IMU tracking. Slime VR is the most popular open source full body tracking solution which is using IMU. It's not an innovation, because we already have some similar products, but this one is open source and the most popular at the moment. Unfortunately, it is not that easy to buy Slime VR from official distribution. If you buy it from their project website, you will get it in almost half a year due to chip manufacturing delays. Of course, you can build it yourself or find someone that will build it for you. You can check their Discord, there are many people who would help you do that. Slime VR uses a different technology than Vive and Tundra trackers. We don't need base stations to use it. That is why we can cover our trackers, which is nice for people who sleep in VR, and with laser tracking, we can't do that. Unfortunately, Slime VR is less precise, less accurate, and in this solution, drift can happen much more often, especially if you used some old EMUs to build it. I have already said that Vive and Tundra trackers are pretty much the same. So the question is, what is better, Slime VR or Lighthouse tracking? There is no need to talk about size or battery life, because both are small and light. And even if Slime VR has a longer battery life, trust me, you don't need more than 7.5 hours of battery life, so it doesn't really matter that much. Let's compare prices. Good Slime VR setup, so two trackers and three trackers with extensions plus shipping and taxes will cost you over 300 US dollars. But if you have someone who can build it for you, you can get it for less than 150. Lighthouse tracking will cost you 360 for three trackers and 150 for two base stations 1.0. In my opinion, if you already have a base station, the choice is simple. Vive trackers or Tundra trackers. You don't have to wait months to get them, because you can even have them tomorrow. And you don't have to deal with some home engineers who will build trackers for you. But for example, if you are a Quest user, you don't have a base station and you can wait a few months or have someone who can build trackers for you right away, Slime VR would be a pretty good choice too. But maybe you're also thinking of better controllers, like Vive Index controllers, right? You will still need base stations in this situation, so it could be a good investment for the future. The decision is in your hands. I am using Oculus slash MetaQuest 2 with three Vive trackers 3.0 and two base stations 1.0. My play space is a bit over 4 per 4 meters, but I still have a pretty good tracking with no issues. I am also waiting for Vive Index controllers to be back on stock because this will be my next upgrade. Of course, there are many other ways to track your body in VR. We can use a Kinect camera, PlayStation Move, phone or even webcam to track our body's movement. But all these solutions are only half measures, as they can't provide high enough accuracy, which is really important to enjoy full body tracking in everyday use. I have tried to keep this tutorial as short as possible, and I hope that I haven't skipped anything important. If there is anything you want to know, please ask me in the comment section down below. I will be more than happy to help you. 
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you soon in the future videos. Bye! Yeah! Done! Uh, uh, uh! I made a video, 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 I just made a video. Ah! Okay, I just kicked something. <laughs> okay, enough, enough. Bama! <laughs>